Yeah. You know, Ryman, I'll send it over to you. You know, certainly you, you boil it down to it's less about cloud, it's more X as a service. You know, in particular, we seem to see a lot of cloud adoption in the form of infrastructure as a service right now. Kind of along the lines of what Andrew just mentioned, how are you seeing organizations move towards the adoption of those service provider type organizations or X as a service? How are they managing that and how are they feeling comfortable that they can actually take that journey and still involve their best practices than which they've done inside their own four walls? How are you seeing that out there take place? Uh, do they feel comfortable? They are doing it. Uh, again, you mentioned about Shadow ID. And if the IT department doesn't do it, somebody will find a way to do it. So let's talk about Amazon Web Services, which is heavily used as Shadow IT. Nobody knows about it. Let's talk about virtualization. It's just that easy to set up a virtual machine. That's why it's so great to work with VMware, because once you use agentless technology, you protect the hypervisor, and no matter how many machines pop up underneath, they're all protected. So I think what's going on, uh, it's happening. You can't avoid it. Virtualization is everywhere. I see it within Trend Micro. I see it within every organization. And uh, companies sometimes are really concerned moving to cloud, moving to virtualized environment. But I sometimes ask myself, is it safer to do this? Let's think about it. A lot of the threats we discussed today are existing because we relied on a monoculture based on Microsoft. So it was easy for the attacker. The moment we move to virtualization and the moment we manage it well, we talk about multi-platform. How many data centers are just running Microsoft? How many data centers are running Red Hat? Are running other operating work? It's the same with mobile. You have all kind of different OS, and as long as you manage them well, as long as you patch them well, it's the same with your cloud infrastructure. I actually believe you could increase security because you don't have a monoculture anymore, and you don't have one uh, weak point where you could shut down the organization. Excellent. Agreed. Aaron, I want to follow up a little bit. You certainly, Ryman, touched on our relationship uh, that, that we have with, uh, with VMware and, and integrating security into the platform. From a, from a skill set perspective, you know, I think it often gets lost um, that we can just adopt virtualization or adopt cloud-based technologies and not have an understanding of how that impacts the current IT workforce. From your experience you know, in product management and as you're deploying features, what are you hearing from people like people in this room around the features and functionality they need to be successful in a platform and ultimately roll that into what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. What are you hearing as far as IT skill sets and adoption? So it's, a, it's an interesting thing. So most security players, practitioners today, they're sort of in the market and they're having a look around it. Uh, a number of different tool sets to address a number of different point solutions. Uh, and we see that from a lot of niche vendors there. They might be very good at one particular thing. But the challenge you've got from that one is actually a ramp in skill within that team to be able to use those tools. Um, the overarching theme is that we're seeing that as new problems are discovered, new niche vendors, and of course I'm encouraging the full adoption of startups in this fine, uh, fine country of ours, uh, but you do tend to find that it's a, it's a tool per purpose. And when you have to be, when you're an enterprise, whether you're a large organization, and you have to try and holistically address a security standpoint from not just an infrastructure perspective, but also from the people and process perspective, you tend to find that the integration between a lot of those tools is proving to be the biggest challenge. So the challenge isn't just skilling up on the new tool from a people perspective, it's also how you're getting the right level of information from those respective tools as well. The other challenge you also see, and on that part, often you'll see tools that are contradictory in the information that they provide. So you have to become almost a broker of, uh, of information yourself as to what you look at and what you don't. Um, the third thing is that how difficult it is to actually deploy these technologies and where they integrate well. Um, the VMware approach is obviously, uh, obviously uh, they oriented around a virtual appliance uh, standpoint. So we have an industry standard that we use. It's packaged up into something called an open virtualization appliance format. And you, know, you go into vCenter and you say, 
install this appliance. You tell it where it is, you tell it what it'd like to have, and it deploys the appliance. You then go into that appliance and you configure it. These things, relatively speaking, despite the sheer volume of tweaking and tuning you can do, are actually quite straightforward. And the time to value is, is quite a bit uh, enhanced as to what it is for a lot of the other solutions out there. Uh, it's also an interesting point when you have a look at, uh, and to your point earlier, around having multiple platforms. Um, it's actually been proven that the cost element involved with managing multiple platforms tends to go higher. Uh, it's not just a cost from a dollars or capex perspective, it's also a cost from an opex perspective as well, because you're having to actually manage twice as many consoles, twice as many tool sets across you know, disparate infrastructures. So looking at the players that have those portfolios that can actually abridge not just across a virtualized layer, but also up into the operating system and the application stack uh, is where a lot of these efficiencies can actually be gained. And of course, our integration with Trend Micro, I mean, like the, the out of the box functionality you get from there and the instant on value from that introspective uh, example that I used earlier, uh, that is worlds apart, a far better way of doing things than having something that's traditionally agent based. Thank you. Can I, if I can just add to that, and both of the conversations we've just had, had there around the cloud and how we might secure that is a great example of how we might have to compromise. Do I want to, do I want to spin my own infrastructure up in the environment and have all the management overhead and oversight that's required with that? Or do I want to work with someone who's already integrated and tightly coupled? And I understand the risk posture and those controls. But importantly, I have some requirements. Can I, can I see the information in my own environment? Can I control? Can I do some configuration at my side? And if that's usable and functional, then that's a hell of a lot more attractive to me than having to spin up my own infrastructure. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's a great point. I'm going to throw another acronym at everybody that speaks to that point. So a, a lot of times with regard to moving services to a private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, we often talk about the concept of BYOC. That's bring your own compliance or bring your own controls, right? Because that's what we're all going to want to feel comfortable with. So there's another BYO, blah, BYOC, bring your own controls, bring your own compliance. So Sanjay, I have not forgotten about you. One of the things that I would like to touch on with you, uh, with your responsibilities within the region, is you talk to a lot of different executives, IT decision makers, business leaders. What are you hearing from them when you go out and, and talk about you know, security and ultimately their assets? What are you hearing from them that is keeping them up at night when it comes to security and, and their overall business? I don't think much has changed. I mean, it basically still comes down to budget, resource, and, and everything else. But um, I had a discussion just over the break that when you look at advanced cyber threats or advanced targeted attacks, one of the things organizations are now wrestling with is I don't have the teams in place to understand security attacks at this level. What do I do? Who do I turn to, right? So even if I implement great products, what partners do I need to bring to that equation to do something? This is actually an area where maybe cloud helps, right? You can't do it right in your environment, not because of technology or because of budget, because you don't actually have skills. Um, so that I think is changing the landscape uh, actually uh, fairly dramatically. Um, the other things that are starting to creep into Australia that haven't historically, I think, when I, I first moved to the region a year ago, um, <coughs> the year prior to that, uh, when I was kind of sizing up the, the move to ANZ, PCI didn't exist, really. I mean, people would mention it, but it, it's month after month starting to get more and more teeth. Now you're seeing data breach notification laws coming in, right? So regulatory controls and, and compliance that haven't been in place in ANZ are now starting to really take hold. Um, and then on top of all that, one of the things I think folks aren't thinking of is how am I going to respond, right? You heard from Ryman today, the CTO of you know, one of the biggest security vendors on the planet, that it's only a question of when, right? And that, by the way, is for us and for everybody in the room. It is only a question of when. If somebody wants to get you, they're going to get you. What I don't see people doing is thinking about how they're going to handle it in the press, with their shareholders, with their stock price, and things like that. So I, I would encourage all of you to not only think about, I'm going to move my data to the cloud, I'm going to adopt a BOIOD policy. If you go to the cloud, what happens when that relationship ends up in divorce? What are you going to do? How are you going to get your data back? When you bring in and allow BYOD and somebody does the wrong thing, how are you going to respond? And when the unfortunate day comes when your name is on the front of the Australian, what the hell are you going to do? That's, that's great insight. And I think really what that speaks to having a formal incident response plan. And I think that's a core backbone for all the uh, information security practitioners out there. You know that that is a key aspect of what you need to put in place for your information security management program.